Hmm, that animation looked a bit funny. Oh, that's because the context changed in translation. Have you ever wondered what differences exist between the English and Japanese script of Final Fantasy IX? You may be surprised with what you find. We want to recommend Vagrant Chocobo's translation and analysis series. Link on screen or in the description below. Stay tuned for the audiobook. This chapter contains sudden loud noises and scary themes that may not be suitable for all audiences. And certain individuals have less than polite language. Uh, that too. Viewer discretion is advised. For the best listening experience, please wear headphones. We hope that you enjoyed the show! Final Fantasy IX a fan-made retelling. Mm. Ha! Serves them right! <laughs> What's going on? Look over there! Is that the theater ship? It is. It's coming out of the smoke. What? No! That's impossible. Ah, they should be blown to smithereens. Oh, go! What are you doing, you fools? Go! Go after them! Yes, your Majesty. Send the whole bloody fleet. Trees are getting awful close, boss. Hmm. Where do you think I'm aiming for? Well, that's, that's the evil forest. Are you sure about this? Huh. Not exactly swimming in options here. Hmm. Which reckon my dad? It's busted. Hmm. What's busted? Right. Everything, man. Damn it. The main engine's caught fire. Damn it. Do anything about the engines! The emergency coolant! Ah, oh, the river's stuck, man! Well, ship! Ah, Senna, out of the way! Come on! If you'd creased it like I asked you to, maybe it wouldn't be rusty! Shut it! Ready for impact! Hold on! Chapter 3, The Evil Forest
Sedan lurched into consciousness. He rolled onto his side, a shrill whine keening in his ears as he forced out a rattling call. He grimaced at the metallic taste in his mouth, screwing his eyes up at the damp underbrush of twigs and pine needles beneath him. Where... where am I? He choked as he staggered to his feet. He came to the crest of a hillside, his eyes swimming over the swathe of coal black trees that had been felled below. His heart sank. There, miles below, at the bottom of the ravine, lay the remains of the once magnificent Prima Vista. Their crash landing had undeniably devastated the airship its innards billowing grievously with smoke. Great heaps of wreckage, dotted with plumes of flame, littered the surrounding forest. Oh, not good. I hope everyone's all right. Sedan muttered, gathering himself as he loped into the underbrush. Just our luck. We barely escaped, only to come here of all places. Damn crazy elephant lady, blowing our engine, reducing the ship to rubble. Baku raved. He exuded a brooding air, glaring through the ship's cracked windows into the ominous forest beyond. He huffed, pulling his bottle-rimmed goggles <clears throat> over his wiry eyebrows. It's gonna get interesting. Interesting, <laughs> remarked Senna from behind him. I hear no one's made it out of here or why. <clears throat> Baku hummed pensively, stroking his beard. What? Blank rasped from the hallway, bursting onto the bridge in a cloud of soot. <coughs> There's fire everywhere. It's out of control. <coughs> he coughed, smacking out a stray flame. Baku uh, growled, scowling at Blank's rattled expression. Uh, quit your whining and get it under control. He snapped, huh. stomping towards the doorframe. Get the wounded out of here. Stiffening, <gasps> Blank gave a curt nod before vanishing into the dingy hallway. Sit up! Wow. Oh, get our goods out of here too. Anything we can use. There's no way we'll survive if all our stuff's incinerated. Baku barked as he too clumped down the hall, Sinna at his heels. <laughs> Garnett hastened up the stony incline. Her dainty arms draped about the squat mage as she hauled him to his feet. Hey, are you all right? She puffed, brushing the dust from Vivi's newly powdered hat. Vivi, however, could not answer, for his shining amber gaze was transfixed on the harrowing depths of the forest beyond. Dense fog snaked through the understory like a ghostly serpent, weaving between ivy-strangled trees whose knotted fingers stretched ever nearer to him. He staggered as a bone-chilling wail reverberated in the dark, and something scuttled through the moss-swept canopy overhead. Phoebe shrank into his coat, gaping at the shadow which veiled the greenery behind Garnet. What is... that? The princess froze, <laughs> her lips tight, her kneeling frame going still as stone. Anchored to the vinery above, a great, gurgling mass roused itself with arachnid propensity, its breath twirling visible tendrils in the bitter air. It distorted horribly, flashing a gaping maw lined with rotting teeth 
and strings of drool. In that instant, it plunged to the forest floor. Watch out! Huh? What was that? Panic welled in Sedan's gut. Twisting awkwardly in the tangle of foliage, he scanned the overgrowth. The remnant of a haunting shriek waned through the trees. Sedan swallowed, his throat tight, his arms and legs prickled with goosebumps. He barreled forward, thorns lashing at the bare skin of his arms, his heart hammering in his chest. Then he stumbled, breaking from the trees in one fell swoop as the thicket gave way to the bowels of a deep, stony clearing. Dazed, Sedan glanced around as something shifted on the ground beside him. His brow furrowed. It was a boy, a mage. No, the very mage. He'd nearly flattened on the stage back in Alexandria. But what was he doing here? He quivered visibly, and his pointed hat slumped backwards, revealing his huge, lamp-like eyes locked with terror on the clearing ahead. Vivi gave little more than a strangled sob. She's, she's in, in trouble. Sedan blinked, following Vivi's gaze. His jaw dropped. What the, what the hell is that? In the distance, haloed by a patch of pale moonlight, lurked a grotesque monster, stocky and covered in weeping bark-like scales. Hefty toes with yellowed claws poked out from beneath the gnarled mass, and a pair of long, tentacular arms feathered with crimson thorns curled in the air like abominable whips. Most terribly, atop its head swayed a fleshy cage, constricting around the lifeless body of Princess Garnet. Sidon gawked, horror struck at the egregious scene before him. Release the princess at once, deplorable vermin! Steiner's thunderous voice broke Sidon from his stupor. The royal knight stood firm, his sword at the ready, his face flushed red with effort. He swung his blade like a baton, as if to coax the beast into submission, stamping his feet like a frustrated mule. Sedan grimaced, the blood pooling in his cheeks as he glared at Steiner. He huffed, unsheathing his daggers as he bounded towards him. Hey! Dunderhead! Stop yelling! Like it's really gonna listen to you! Bewildered, Steiner wheeled to face Sedan, his sallow cheeks and forehead glistening with a sheen of sweat. His mouth became very animated, as if to yell, but nothing came out. Oh, would you stop trying to talk him out of it and put that sword to use? Sedan finished. He thrust his blades high into the air, diving for the monster's belly. But before his steel made contact, an enormous tentacle swept forward, slamming him in the chest. In one swift motion, Sudan was thrown off his feet and sent hurtling to the ground with tremendous force. Stars danced in his eyes as he rolled over. Damn it. Sudan groaned, staggering to his feet. Steiner, a few paces ahead, hacked fruitlessly at the air, hurling a volley of insults as the monster swung for him. Zidane circled the clearing, surveying his foe with mounting enmity. Ah, come on, come on! <laughs> he gasped, spotting the princess. She made to stand, her eyes fluttering, roving blindly over the glade. Zidane's stomach gave a sickening lurch as she issued a plaintive cry. 
before slumping over and going deathly still. Could it be poisoning her? He shook his head roughly. It doesn't matter what it's doing. It's hurting her. I have to end this now. Wary of the whirling tentacles, Zidane dashed and skidded along the rocky ground, allowing momentum to carry him crashing into the monster's belly. With a yell, he buried his blade to the hilt in the beast's side, springing back as it gurgled brutishly, slashing him with its serrated arm. Feeling dampness on his torso, Zidane spared a glance at the ruddy stain which now sullied his white undershirt. So you did get me, you ugly bastard. He spat, preparing to launch another attack. Sudan ducked, the tentacle whipping overhead. In his haste, he collided with something to his right and stumbled, nearly tasting the ground. Sudan shot Steiner a furious look. Uh, watch it, you idiot! Steiner returned his glare. Oh, it's you who's in my way! With no time for a retort, Zidane tumbled, evading another blow. He lashed out, spearing the tentacle overhead. The wailing beast thrashed its arm, heaving him up onto his feet. Gritting his teeth, he dug his heels into the ground arms burning with the effort of keeping his place. Hey! Rusty! Hey, Bellow! Why don't you make yourself useful? Briefly, Steiner seemed in conflict with himself, a hint of baleful relish twitching at the corner of his lips. But it vanished as he drew back his blade. With a yell, Steiner hewed the wriggling appendage clean off, sending it plummeting to the ground with a deafening thud. Zidane tore his weapons free, glowering at the night. The princess's voice broke their silent exchange. Garnet! Garnet's hair spilled over her body in dark waves. Her arms splayed at her sides like a marionette with slackened strings. Vinular vines wound about her wrists and ankles. Where it touched, her pallid skin wore a splotchy violet hue. A strange sound, bubbling and popping, suddenly issued from the monster, its severed arm wriggling and convulsing. Zidane, aghast, watched as the fleshy stump swelled, slowly extending to its original length. Garnet heaved in agony before falling in on herself. No. It's using her to regenerate. I'll destroy it! Zidane snarled, slicing the air with his sword. The monster lurched for him, but was promptly blocked by Steiner. Idiot! It'll hurt! Deadlocked, the beast forced him back, his feet skidding across the stony floor. We can't do nothing! No! Get away! Vivi shrieked, startling Zidane, who had forgotten he was there. It was then that the monster flung for the mage, sweeping him into the moon-speckled clearing. Vivi sobbed, thrashing helplessly as he was ensnared around his middle. No! I don't want to die! Streaks of amber dribbled down his face, but in his gloves there began to glow a red-hot light. No! Fire burst from his hands, twisting blindingly fast up the creature's gnarled body, charring it to a crisp. Vivi thudded to the forest floor, landing face first and motionless. Uh, hey! Hey, kid! You okay? Zidane called, nearing the mage. The monster screeched, distressed, as it tried in vain to sprout a new arm. Wait. Zidane watched in awe, splitting into a triumphant grin. Hey! It's not regenerating. <laughs> Hell yeah! Kid, whatever you did, can you do it again? Vivi swayed, clamoring to his feet. He blinked at Zidane as he stumbled back. Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Try. Screwing his eyes shut, Vivi faced the gurgling titan, 
his arms outstretched. A golden flash of light danced through the air, setting the monster's belly alight. It gave another terrible wail, lashing at Steiner. Too slow to dodge, the knight gave a yelp as his feet were swept out from under him. With a clattering bang, he landed flat against the ground. All right! Zidane whooped. Time to go in for the kick. He stopped short, however, for the monster howled, retching up a bubbling green foam laden with thick vapor. Jolting back, Zidane covered his mouth in the crook of his arm. The beast darted into the overstory, a disfigured shadow swallowed by the forest. The mist dissipated, a puddle of blood and muck left in its wake. Steiner's armor rattled as he jumped to his feet. Mouth agape, he stared, horror-struck, at the place whence the monster had vanished. Princess! Princess! Steiner called frantically, his headgear swiveling. She's gone! whimpered a voice beside Sedan, so quietly that he nearly missed it. Slowly, he gazed down, his mind still fixed on saving Garnett. Phoebe pulled his hat tightly around his small face, as if hoping he might disappear into it. I was so scared. He wept. That monster's probably gonna eat her. Steiner came to a sudden halt, now facing the tiny mage, who sat, crumpled, on the forest floor. A deep crease formed between Steiner's brows, and he smacked himself roughly on the forehead with his fist, his voice strained and hoarse. How could I let this happen? Zidane flipped his tail irritably across the rocky ground, stomping past both of them to look out over a nearby cliff top. No, there's still time. She's not dead yet. He narrowed his eyes at the abyss below, drowned by creeping vines and twisting foliage. How can you be so sure? Zidane threw Steiner an impatient look. Most monsters live in packs. There's a hierarchy? <sighs> Chances are, it's taking her to its master. Steiner perked up immediately. <gasps> that means the princess might still be. <sighs> Come, we must go find her at once. <coughs> Vivi coughed, his shoulders rising and falling as he wobbled towards Zidane and Steiner. Zidane tilted his head, a look of concern etched across his face. Hey, you all right? I... I think so. Vivi replied, though his swaying suggested otherwise. <gasps> Why do I suddenly feel so dizzy? Steiner groaned, his head in his hands, as he collapsed to his knees. Not a moment later, Vivi fell to the ground, still and unconscious. Ah, damn it. Zidane staggered back, the forest spinning around him as his ears began to ring. We have to get back. I have to get help. Vivi blinked, disoriented. He realized, as he came to, that he was lying on a bed in a dark and unfamiliar room. Wood paneling lined the walls, and the firelight of a lone candle flickered faintly on the ceiling above him. You guys are lucky, said a voice to his left. If it wasn't for Zidane, you'd both be dead. Fifi gave a start. He saw that a young man with dense crimson hair and a badly scarred face sat on a bed across from him. His gaze 
which was quite stern, seemed a bit frightening from under the shadow of his oversized headband. Some of the monsters in this forest reproduce by planting seeds in other animals, he explained. And when the seeds sprout, hasta la vista, you become beef jerky. <laughs> With a shiver, Vivi recalled the green foam and vapor that had issued from the monster in the forest. Feeling as though a knot were tightening in his stomach, he glanced down at the moss-colored stain which dampened his front. Um, am I gonna die? He asked, his voice quavering. The man paused, studying the small mage through narrowed eyes. Vivi shrunk further under the duvet. Then, the man smirked, <laughs> his face coloring with amusement. No, you're gonna be fine. He shoved his hand into the leather satchel at his side. Procuring a petite vial, he popped the cork before handing it to Vivi. Here, drink this. It'll remove all the seeds from your body. Oh. Okay. Vivi peered down at the glass now in his hand. The murky, violet substance within sloshed repulsively with a smell reminiscent of putrid fish. He hesitated for a moment, staving off nausea before bringing the vial to his mouth. I'll rescue you, princess. Steiner groaned, his eyes downcast, oh. as he ambled down the rather compromised hall of the Prima Vista. The man leading him grunted, shoving the back of Steiner's chest plate with his metal pincer. Steiner shot a nasty scowl over his shoulder before fixing his gaze on his feet. The floor rippled like water beneath him, colors spilling together like that of a splotchy oil painting. And how do I come to find myself here, in the clutches of criminals? He rambled, vexed. If I am in a state to walk, I am in a state to leave. I have no time to waste. By now, the princess... The princess could be... Steiner caught sight of a staircase at his right. Without hesitation, he whipped around the bin, fumbling with the railing as he made for the steps. He let out a gasp, for he found himself face to face with the double of the hulking man at his back. The man snorted, flaring his boar-like nostrils, puffing air on Steiner's clammy forehead. <laughs> Stand aside! Steiner barked in his most knightly voice. The man wrinkled his snout, a look of mingled contempt and amusement, passing over his face as he glanced up at his twin. Without warning, he charged forward, forcing Steiner back onto the landing above. Steiner glared, affronted and surly at his captor, his lip curling. Room behind you. Go. The man demanded. Steiner clenched his fists, a vein bulging at his temple. The princess is in grave danger! He snarled, his jaw set. Why were these men trying to keep him from her? He wondered to himself, after all of the trouble they went through to kidnap her? Was he the only one who cared about her life? Uh, do you intend to abandon her? He howled. Don't worry about the princess. The first twin answered firmly. The boss will think of something. The second twin added, throwing open the door beside him before shoving Steiner through. So stay put. Steiner barreled through the doorway. Please! I shan't take orders from you! With some effort, the brothers wrestled him back into the room. Hmm. Get some rest. The one nearest the door sang, almost tauntingly at Steiner. Yeah, take that medicine I gave you. His twin called. They slammed and locked the door. 
muttering to each other as they strode from earshot. <laughs> Left alone to pace the dilapidated storage room, and with only a surplus of dusty drums and tambourines for company, Steiner peered miserably at the small round window near the ceiling. It was no larger than the palm of his hand, certainly not wide enough to escape through. I can't found it! I can't just stand here! The princess's life rests in my hands. What could their boss possibly accomplish? He moaned. <laughs> Suddenly remembering something, Steiner noted a short vial sat upon a table at his right. He swiped it, grimacing as he examined its contents. A strange, congealing purple sludge. This is meant to be medicine? He popped the cork, giving it a cautious sniff. It smells terrible! His face twisted in abhorrence. And the colour! <laughs> of course. This is obviously poison! Quickly, he sealed the vial dropping it back onto the table. Steiner staggered, suddenly overcome by waves of vertigo as sparks of light flashed across his blurring vision. I can't take it anymore! He lamented, crumpling to the floor. God help me! The vial rolled off of the table, landing with a soft tink on the floor. He picked it up, his hands trembling. What choice do I have? Warily, he uncorked it, swallowing the unsightly substance in one gulp. From the ship's bridge, Baku glowered at a pacing Zidane. Forget it. Monsters born out of the mist are crawling everywhere, boy. Zidane halted, rounding sharply on Baku. So what? There's nothing out there we can't handle. Baku wrinkled his snout, mm. giving him a disdainful look. Yeah? What are we going to do about the wounded? Oh, we can take them with us. Baku scoffed, huh. stomping over to a cabinet. He threw the small doors open, revealing shelves that overflowed with old books, maps, and loose parchment. Tell me, how are we going to carry all of them? The wounded are a burden in battle and in travel. <clears throat> he yanked from the shelf a thick leather-bound book with gold lettering stamped Engine Maintenance. Our best bet at survival is laying low until we can get the ship back up and running. He closed the cabinet door. and slammed the book down on the table. Going out as is would be suicide. Sedan's expression soured as he watched Baku pull a chair. <sighs> Our own come before outsiders. You know this. Baku lectured, <sighs> wetting his finger as he thumbed through the pages. <sighs> too bad, though. She was quite a beaut, that one. But it's just too reckless. I'm too stupid. I can't be concerned with saving her now. Zidane balled his fists, <laughs> kicking the staircase beside him in exasperation. Jaw clinched and nostrils flaring. He gave a huff, tromping for the door. <laughs> you better not set one foot outside this ship, travel. You got that! Baku roared after him. Ugh. Zidane whipped around, his face flushed with anger. I can't believe you're abandoning her! You're nothing but a big coward! He spat. With that, Zidane stormed down the hallway, slamming the door behind him as he went. Steiner now considerably more clear of mind, had taken to wandering around his modest accommodation. The structure is in poor condition, he muttered to himself. Oh, perhaps I could break out by ramming into the wall. He charged it, 
struggling against the wall with all his might. But his efforts were in vain. Then, an idea struck him. He hollered, banging on the wall. Let me out at once! Steiner sighed heavily, his shoulders drooping. <coughs> oh, I'm still feeling unwell. He admitted, drifting Ugh. back to the small wooden table in the center of the room. He slumped against it, twiddling his oh. thumbs and pouting sullenly. Huh? Something near his foot caught his eye. What's this? Steiner leaned down and scooped it up turning it over inquisitively. What an ugly doll! He commented. He held a filthy rag doll, clad in garish pink. Black button eyes gleamed up at him. The seams bore rough, child-like stitching. The stuffing exposed on one side. He flipped it over, deciphering the messy scribbling on its back. Princess Garnett, age 15? He scowled, knitting his heavy brows. How dare they write the princess's name on such a ragged doll! Besides, the princess is not fifteen. She's sixteen! His grip on the doll slackened as he stared at it. Miserably, Steiner's face fell. Poor oh, princess. Zidane tramped down the stairs, still fuming. Thumping onto the landing, he noticed Blank, standing with his back to the wall and his arms folded. Zidane cocked an eyebrow at him. I gave that kid some medicine. He said. He'll be fine. Blank pointed to the door behind him. Why don't you go see him? I think he wants to thank you. Zidane chewed on his lip, mulling it over for a moment before pushing past Blank and opening the door to one of the ship's many bedrooms. The room was dim. Dresser drawers hung open and beds lay unmade. In the far corner sat an occupied bed. With care, Zidane closed the door behind himself and padded over to it. Vivi jumped startled awake by Zidane's arrival. Um, th thank you for helping me, Vivi said, scooting to the edge of the bed. <laughs> Giving a wan smile, Zidane hooked his thumbs through his belt loops. Ah, don't mention it. Puzzlement passed over his face. But, you know, I don't think I ever got your name, kid. Uh, it's Vivi. Right. <clears throat> Anyways, Vivi, it was your black magic that saved the day. I want to give yourself some more credit. You know, you've got some major power for such a little guy. Vivi didn't answer. Instead, he lowered his head, blinking at the duvet. Huh? Zidane shifted. What's wrong? Are you peeved at me because I called you little? Hey, listen. You're a great mage with great powers, all right? To hell with looks. It's what's inside that counts. He answered, bumping a fist to his chest. Uh, um. Vivi's little hands wound tightly around the bed covers. Um, sorry. He began timidly. When that monster caught her, I couldn't do anything. Zidane puffed his chest, rolling his shoulders and curling his tail. Hey, don't worry about the princess. He said. I'll get her back. I promise. Uh, really? Vivi met Zidane's gaze, his eyes full, shimmering like autumn moons. Uh, thank you, M Mr. Zidane. Whoa. <laughs> Zidane laughed stiffly, rocking on his heels. That's the first time anyone's called me Mr. Just call me Zidane. All right. Uh, oh. Vivi nodded, seeming bashful. Okay, Zidane. 
Sedan closed the bedroom door, ruffling his hair as he wandered into the hall. Fog had funneled inside from the surrounding forest, making the musty hallway feel even colder and gloomier. Jeez, it was pretty down. Maybe I shouldn't have made that promise. He glanced at the porthole across the hall, moonlight draping a milky spotlight on the railing below. I don't know if we'll even be able to find her. The image of the princess, morbidly pale, slickened with sweat, lingered in his mind's eye. Running his fingers through his hair, he took a deep, steadying breath, willing away the jolt of pain that intrinsically accompanied the thought. Man, she was beautiful. But in her eyes, is that sadness? Memories of Garnet, condescent, fixed under the lone spill of light in the castle's shadowy stairwell, flooded his mind, unbidden. It felt like she was looking right through me, past me. What was she searching for? Sedan murmured, taking a seat on the staircase as his eyes fixed on the floor. <laughs> I had forgotten all about our plan. Something else was pulling at me. His hand rose to his chest to find his heart pounding. I've never felt so strange. Maybe, maybe fate brought us together. I mean, why else would I? <laughs> he blinked, his hands falling from his face, his brow furrowing. What am I doing? What's there to think about anyway? She's cute and she's in trouble. <laughs> That's all that matters. He leapt to his feet, his golden hair dancing about his flushed cheeks. <laughs> From down the hall, footsteps neared him, followed by a shock of red hair emerging from the dense fog. Ah, uh, they... <sighs> Blank's voice caught upon meeting Zidane's gaze, his arms folded over his chest, a knowing glint appearing in his eye. You never learn, do you? Hm. I'm going to find her, and I'm taking that knight with me. Zidane answered with purpose, Beaming broadly. Hmm. Of course you are. Blank bristled, his expression darkening. You're unbearably reckless. You don't even know what's out there. Besides, there's no way the boss will let that happen. You know what you're in for if you try. Sedan deflected his gaze past Blank, focusing pointedly on the dark hallway behind him. I know. Blank huffed, hardly. That rash attitude of yours is infuriating. His usual dry rasp wavered, betraying anger. He looked Zidane up and down quickly. Well, what are you waiting for? Go talk to him then. A tense silence fell between them as Zidane held Blank's eye. A final display of defiance before he took his leave. Zidane hesitated, outside the door to the ship's bridge, his palm resting tentatively on the handle. Lantern light flickered dimly through the crack, spilling ominously onto the floor. Sedan steeled himself. He had made his decision. There was no turning back. He pushed open the door and stepped inside. Baku glanced up from his seat. A hefty book and a heap of parchment strewn across the table in front of him. He scrutinized Sedan, his nettled appearance accentuated by the many lines on his face. <laughs> I bet you're about to tell me you're leaving, eh? Yeah. I promised Garnett I'd kidnap her. Sedan answered, 
maintaining firm eye contact with his boss. A cocky <laughs> grin broke out over Baku's round face as his stomach shook with laughter. Uh, I didn't ask you why, boy. His smile wrinkled his eyes. Uh, I can't blame you, though. She's damn beautiful. Baku <laughs> slapped the table. Guess that's reason enough. His knuckles cracked with a timbre of uh. snapping branches. <sighs> well now, I hope you're ready, because I'm going to bust you up for breaking the rules. Zidane's mouth tightened. He watched as Baku groaned, heaving himself from his chair. Baku slapped him on the shoulder as he passed, the door whining as it opened behind him. Cargo room, now! They arrived in the cargo room to find Marcus and Senna stacking charred and battered supplies along the wall. Boss. Marcus's shoes squelched with mud as he swiveled to face Baku. We just finished going through the supplies. Marcus's uh. voice caught, his demeanor shifting. Here we go. Is something wrong? Asked Senna, raising his eyebrow. Huh. Kid's gonna get what's coming to him. Baku warned, pulling the sword from his hip. And I ain't holding back. Zidane said nothing, taking his place opposite his boss. What's, what's that supposed to? Senna trailed off. In trouble, that's what. Marcus finished, folding his arms as he took his seat atop a nearby crate. Baku <clears throat> smirked. Yeah, that's right. The boys decided that chasing a bit of tail matters more to him than his brothers. He's a glutton for punishment, all right. <laughs> Sinna gasped, affronted. Man, you're crazy. You don't even know if she's still alive. Why do you think they call it the evil forest? Sudan narrowed his eyes, drawing his daggers. Uh, oh, Blanky boy's probably already given him an earful, Sinner. Marcus sneered. But doesn't Ruby always say Sudan's as stubborn as a mule? Hey, what? Marcus and Senna's commentary was quickly abated as Baku charged across the room, the floor trembling under his impressive tonnage. Zidane dashed to his right, parrying Baku's swing as he met him. His senior countered with a swift elbow to the chest, sending Zidane sprawling. He barely had time to raise his daggers before Baku laid into him with his sword grinning as he pressed down on the younger man's blades. <laughs> you gotta fight better than that. Don't embarrass me now. Zidane growled, his face twisting under the strain. With his arms giving out, he rolled aside. Baku's sword came crashing down, wedging itself into the floor. Damn it! He raved, yanking his blade free. Baku staggered, scanning the room. But Zidane was already at his back. With all his might, he struck at the back of Baku's knee, the boss crashing down with all the din of a crumbling mountain. Adding insult to injury, Zidane wrenched Baku's goggles up over his nose, releasing them with an angry snap. God, God damn it! All right, you win. Baku huffed, pulling the cap and goggles from his head and tossing them to the floor. He rubbed his nose sourly as he got to his feet. I'll be damned. He coughed. Uh, of all the dirty tricks. Uh, but I'd expect no less from a Tantalus. From you. <laughs> and that's not all. Zidane twirled Baku's pouch of gill on one finger before pocketing it with a flourish. <laughs> Baku gave a hearty laugh, positively beaming. 
Bravo! Go find your princess, boy. He strode past Sedan, gifting him a last punch to the <coughs> gut, cackling to himself as he lumbered <coughs> from the room. Oh, I should have expected that. Zidane coughed, folding over as he clutched his stomach. <laughs> he was pulling his punches till the last one, eh? Marcus chuckled from his seat. Way to go, Zidane. A husky voice, dripping with sarcasm, broke the momentary silence. Zidane <laughs> peered over his shoulder and saw Blank leaning against the door frame behind him. I unlocked the door to the storage room that night's held up in. So, you're free to go talk to him. Sudan stared at him, wordlessly. Blank's stony expression forbade gratitude. <sighs> the scarred thief turned, stalking back down the hall. When Sedan entered the storage room, he spied Steiner, hunched by a table, looking woe-begone, a small, tattered doll cradled in his mitt-like hands. Startled by his intruder, Steiner tossed it aside, stumbling to his feet. Sedan wrinkled his nose in adversion. Come on. You're too old to be playing with a doll. Silence! A scoundrel like you could never understand. Steiner began, his cheeks tightening as his face flushed a splotchy red. <clears throat> I'm just overwhelmed with concern for the princess. In a fit, he batted his fists at the air. If only you rogues hadn't kidnapped her. This is all your fault. He paced erratically, pivoting to shove an accusatory finger in Zidane's face. <laughs> if anything should happen to the princess, I will have your head. Sedan rolled his eyes, his hands on his hips. Take it easy. Jeez. I'm gonna go look for her now. If you're done throwing your tantrum, I'll let you come with me. Well, if you promise to be good. What do you say, Rusty? Steiner's eyes you, bulged. Would you stop calling me that? He spluttered. I am Adelbert Steiner, captain of the Knights of Pluto. And I will never collude with you conniving thieves. Oh, Captain. Zidane strutted around him, analyzing the night with a patronizing air. <laughs> and here I thought you were a private, with that cheap, rusty armor. Flabbergasted, Steiner's mouth hung, cheeks puffing as he threatened a rebuttal. Zidane stopped him. Look, this has nothing to do with Tantalus. It's something I decided to do on my own. I just want to save Garnett. That's all. His eyes narrowing, mm. Steiner's mouth twisted into a bitter scowl. Mm. He brandished his fist at Zidane again, now dangerously close to his face. You... you had better not be lying. If you are, I will not hesitate to kill you. He finished through gritted teeth. Sedan arched an eyebrow at him in contempt. Yeah, yeah. I'm counting on you, Rusty. He turned, making for the door. Make no mistake. I'm only going with you to rescue the princess. I will deal with you personally when this is over. <sighs> Whatever. <clears throat> it may be difficult with just the two of us. I suggest we seek Master Vivi's help as well. Steiner offered, his voice almost agreeable. <laughs> Zidane faced him, his eyebrow twitching. Uh, why are you calling him master? You fool! Steiner grunted. That black mage has unimaginable powers. You saw his potential. He glanced at the floor, appearing briefly ashamed. I regret that I must involve him. But alas, in this situation, it cannot be helped. We absolutely need Master Vivi's strength to rescue the princess. Sedan chewed on his tongue absently, silent for a moment, before turning for the door again. He sighed, nodding at Steiner. Well, all right then. Let's go talk to him.
The bedroom door opened with a groan of protest. By the dimness of candlelight, Vivi's hat cast a tall, jagged shadow along the oak walls. It shifted as he peered up at them. Oh, Zidane! He set aside the book in his lap. Zidane came to stand at the mage's bedside, Steiner trotting noisily behind him. Well, Vivi? Zidane began. We're leaving. Going to rescue the princess. Oh, really? Vivi glowed with joy. It's great. Be careful, okay? Actually... Zidane <clears throat> scratched the back of his head. We want you to come with us. Uh-huh. Vivi pulled the bedsheets to his chest. But, but, but I... I... I can't do anything. Before Zidane could retort, Steiner was rebuting him. Hardly, Master Vivi. <laughs> Your magic was highly effective against that monster. If I'm honest, I hold your power in higher esteem than I do this scoundrel. Sedan huffed, glancing at the ceiling. Uh, but, but I'm scared. Vivi started, suddenly becoming very interested in a dirt stain on his pant leg. I... I couldn't even move last time. <coughs> Please, Master Vivi. Steiner continued, the urgency ripening in his tone. For the sake of Princess Garnet and all of Alexandria, I humbly request your assistance. Come on, Vivi. Zidane groaned, cutting Steiner off before he could start up again. You're a black mage for crying out loud. If anyone has a shot at this, it's you. Vivi said nothing. Silence pervaded the room as Adan stared, with meaningful persistence, at the brim of Vivi's hat. Finally, Zidane turned, motioning for Steiner as he made for the door. The knight did not move. Hey, Rust Bucket. We can't force him. If he wants to help the princess, that's his choice. After a moment, Steiner's armor squeaked, his bulky figure shifting in the inky darkness. Wait. I'll come. Vivi's tiny voice sounded. A smile materialized on Zidane's face as he strode back to where the younger boy sat, offering him his hand. <laughs> All right then. Show us what you got. An oppressive haze washed the halls in gray. Steiner's voice came distantly, murmuring to Vivi, some ways behind Zidane, as they neared the ship's exit. Is she really that important to you? A familiar voice, low and irritable, came from the shadows on the bottom landing. Zidane's stomach tightened. He found Blank, with his arms crossed, glaring at him from across the room. I can't sit still knowing a girl's in trouble, Zidane said, plainly. It goes against my nature. Blank studied him with an air of growing hostility. <laughs> Whatever. You're full of shit. His temper sparked, and Zidane gave a bitter laugh. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're jealous. You don't want me making friends with the princess. Is that it? <sighs> She's not even my type. Blank replied, nearing Sedan. I came down here to give you this. He tossed something at him. Sedan uh caught it, glancing down at a bottle of murky liquid, violet as mulberries. He wrinkled his nose at Blank. This is cute and all. But I won't need a love potion to reel this one in. Blank <sighs> groaned in exasperation. God, would you get your mind out of the gutter? This is the medicine I gave to that kid in the night. A seed remover for Her Majesty. Zidane paused, before slipping the potion into his pocket. Huh. 
How thoughtful. He turned for the exit again, but Blank's voice stopped him. Why am I always helping you? He asked, almost to himself. There was a stretch of silence. Sedan's hand lingered on the doorframe as a brush of night air passed over him. For what it's worth, thanks, Blank. I'll see you when I see you. He followed, waving half-heartedly as he disappeared into the fog. With a yell, Zidane hewed a spitting beast as it hurtled towards him from the vinery above. Uh, man, they just keep coming! He hollered, peering up at the twisting vines which enveloped the forest canopy. Thick moss curtains swung threateningly overhead, dotted with a scarlet luminescence of innumerable creatures. They scuttled through a dense network of sticky webs and devil's ivy, their thorny bodies camouflaged with the other story, save for a sizable frilled collar, red in color, which encircled each upon its beady head. Uh, further down this tunnel we go, the more of them there are. Vivi whimpered, shrinking behind Steiner. Yeah, we must be getting close to their hive. Sedan added as he peered downhill to where the misty pathway was swallowed by encroaching black. Stay close. He called over his shoulder as he made his descent. As the party neared the hollow, the air thickened with moisture, causing sweat to pool under their clothes. Spores, moldy green, accumulated, lining the cavern walls with ick. When they reached the opening, an ear of piercing screech tore through the trees, and the ground beneath them trembled. <gasps> Great Gaia? Wh what is that thing? Steiner shouted, flabbergasted, jabbing a finger at the space before them. The clearing was wrapped in vines and lined with dewy, off-white funnel webs. At its center, a titan clung to the forest wall with an array of barbed tentacles thicker than the greatest of tree limbs. It swiveled its huge, flowering face, turning four black, arachnid eyes unblinkingly on them. Uh, it's the princess! cried Vivi, pointing with his shaking arm. From behind the beast swayed a cascade of dark hair, slender arms, waxy and ghastly white, hung limp from within a tangle of foliage across the clearing. Princess! bellowed Steiner. He turned on Zidane, his mm. eyes blazing. Stay your grubby hand! Alexandria would be disgraced if a mere bandit were to rescue the princess! Zidane clenched his jaw. Oh yeah, you look like you have this under control. Never mind the fact that I'm the reason you're here! You're the reason? Steiner spluttered. Bah! You're right! If it wasn't for you, none of us would be here! Guys, the princess look out! Suddenly, the creature's hulking arm came swinging overhead. It slammed against the forest wall, narrowly missing them as Steiner flattened himself to the ground in his effort to duck. 
Zidane's heart was in his throat. <sighs> he recovered his footing, his gaze flitting between the beast and the princess. Rusty! He called. You hold the monster off while I break Garnet free. Zidane leapt down into the ravine, dashing across the clearing. The hum of the forest drowning out Steiner's cries of protest as he went. He climbed over Vinery, grappling with the tacky webbing that lined it. Garnet was nearly engulfed by sinews, her body tightly constricted by violet, thorny creepers. Garnet! called Zidane, swallowing anxiety building in his throat. He parted her hair, cradling her face as he tilted her head. Garnet, wake up! Her forehead glistened with sweat, her once rosy cheeks and lips now an ashen gray. Even through his glove, her skin felt cold as ice. Please, answer me! She moaned weakly, her eyes fluttering open. She seemed to mouth something, her words incomprehensible. Still, Zidane's heart soared. Hey, stay with me. I'm getting you out of here. He yanked at her bindings, but they did not slacken. Worse, like a python, they seemed to constrict tighter around her as he struggled. She cried with pain. In a panic, Zidane wedged his dagger into the snare. Thorns biting into the exposed flesh of his forearm. Vivi hollered. Zidane glanced over just in time to see the monster slinking towards him. It hissed, spitting a jet of bubbling spittle into the air. Zidane jerked his arm free, prizing the monster's jaws apart with his blade. Green blood and drool spilled over his weapon, dripping onto his arm. He cried out, his skin blistering as he forced the monster back. Below, Steiner slashed at one of the beast's hefty tentacles, distracting it just long enough for Zidane to rip his dagger out and tumble to the forest floor. A moment later, Steiner crashed to the ground beside him. I thought you were gonna hold it off. Sedan panted, righting himself, his arm streaming with blood. I did! Steiner huffed, his lip curling. But it regenerates like it's thrall. It seems my attacks have little effect. If only... If only I had the ability to harness magic! <sighs> Steiner and Sedan peered at one another in mutual understanding, turning their gaze on Vivi, who stood quivering, terrified nearby. <laughs> Vivi! Your magic is the only chance we got at stopping that thing! Can you blast it with? Yelled Sedan, dodging the monster's swings. Oh. Phoebe's eyes widened as he shrunk behind his collar. Oh, oh. Try. Oh. Tentatively, he extended his now violently trembling arms. The beast snarled, spurting sizzling acid over its snapping fangs. A stream shot into the air. Phoebe screeched, towering as a tiny wisp of flame sputtered from his palms and vanished. Not a moment later, the beast's tentacle was whirling through the air. Ooh. Steiner lunged for Vivi. He dropped to the ground with a clamor. The small mage nestled safely in his arms. We cannot let Master Vivi be injured! Steiner puffed. Without his power, the princess will... Will be. He shook his head, a deep crease appearing between his brows. No, oh, I cannot think of it. He set the mage on his feet and stood before him, his sword drawn. Master Vivi, use me as your shield. For the sake of the princess, you must 
focus with all your might! Sedan stared hard at Steiner, heaving a great sigh of dislike. I really hate playing defense. What choice do we have? He grumbled to himself before taking his post beside the knight. He glanced over his shoulder, nodding at the mage. The beast lashed at the air, slashing a heavy whip like appendage down on Steiner, who impaled it with his blade. Zidane heard the crackle of fire behind him, followed by a burst of heat, but the flame zipped far past the beast before dispersing. Steiner's face was beet red, the veins in his arms bulging. Let go! Zidane called. What? Are you mad? Steiner cried, his teeth clenched. Without time to argue, Zidane kicked Steiner with as much force as he could muster. The knight tumbled backwards, his weapon clattering as the beast's arm slammed into the ground. Soon after, yet another tentacle struck him on his breastplate. Sliding, Steiner collided with Zidane, swiftly delivering the both of them to the forest floor. Me. You rusted tomato! <coughs> this is ridiculous. We're running out of time. Zidane snarled, getting to his feet. He looked towards the princess, suspended on the cavern wall. There has to be another way. We have to get her out of that snare. Now! Zidane threw his companions a glance before tearing across the clearing. The tether that held her was of deepest purple and dotted with black, thorny spines. He followed its length to the monster's body, where it dissolved into the base of its head, lined with bluish veins and reflecting a clear outer casing. So, it's feeding on her through this, he said, thrusting his dagger overhead, his arms poised to strike. If I could just... Zidane gasped, a searing heat, like a cut from molten glass, tore across his chest. He saw the beast lunging towards him, spittle streaming from its fangs. Zidane's dagger slipped from his hand, his ears ringing as his legs gave way, and he plummeted over the crest of a ravine. He landed on ground like a shallow mire, slick vinery weighing on his middle, his vision fringed with creeping black. He heard someone yelling far above, their words smothered as though he were lying on the ocean floor. He made to sit up, but was overcome with the strain, his lungs torched with crippling agony. What's happening to me? His arms felt as though beset with a thousand tiny needles, which assaulted his extremities with intense prickling. His heartbeat surged in his ears. Something hot and damp blistered under his shirt. A flash of red appeared at the top of the ravine, and he stared at it, dazed. His world was fading. Not like this. Garnett. She'll... She'll die. Her image manifested in his sightless vision. I... I promised her! Faster than thought, white hot flames erupted from within him. A torrent of adrenaline exploded through his body, drenching every fiber of his being in its brilliance. The darkness that had marred his vision ebbed away, replaced with a lustrous hue of rosy light. Sudan eased to his feet, still panting and shaking as he stared with awe at his own hands. His fingernails appeared to be lengthening, 
sharpening to points. His skin was glowing, tinged with rouge. Am I... dead? He whispered incredulously. His voice, he noticed, vibrated with a peculiar resonance in the dewy air. The sounds around him were oddly amplified, drifting through his perception like tangible waves. What the hell? I leave you alone for five minutes and you turn pink? As if in a dream, Sudan gaped at the top of the ravine. A familiar young man was staring back at him with a look of utmost bewilderment. Blank? Before Blank could comment, something swept his feet out from under him, dragging him from Zidane's sight. On instinct, Zidane moved towards the incline. He staggered, however, as a strange sensation suddenly overcame him. It felt as though invisible ants scurried across his skin. With a shock, he watched as wisps of fur Yusha in color bristled over his arms. Time lapsed into a crawl as he crested the ravine, bathing his senses in the scene that unfurled before him. Master Bibi, this is the last bastion. You must lend me your power, called Steiner. Steiner's sword was wedged into the beast's tentacle, and from it, blank dangled by his ankle, slashing at his assailant to no avail. Master Phoebe! Please! I... I can't! Phoebe squeaked, shrinking further behind the knight. I... 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 Uh, whatever you're gonna do, could you do it before this thing rips my damn leg off? Yelled Blank, his mottled face twisted in aggravation, the contents of his waist satchel clanking. Ah, ha! Ah, that's it! Steiner exclaimed. Fear not, Master Vivi. Channel your magic through me, and I shall be your conduit. Vivi's golden eyes became owlish. Uh, I've n never done that before. <sighs> hey, no rush, kid. Blank hollered, his cheeks swelling to a ripe purple. Uh, okay, okay. I'll try. Vivi screwed his eyes shut, folding his hands out in front of him. Nestled in his tiny palms, wisps of flame took the shape of a humble ball, accompanied by a gentle hum. Vivi offered it to Steiner, his stout arms appearing shyly over the brim of his hat. The knight's sword began to glow red hot, as if fresh from the forge. <laughs> Brilliant! Steiner cheered, tearing free the flame-imbued blade. The tentacle sizzled, snapping off as it crashed to the ground, blank landing with it. The monster gave an ear-splitting screech, retracting its charred stump. The cavern filled with tumultuous roars as it failed to regenerate. Nearing them, Zidane's gaze fell upon his own blade, clutched in his hand. It glowed as Steiner's had, but bore a strange rosy fluorescence that traveled from uh, his palms. Th that light? I thought that it was only a legend. Steiner gasped, his voice colored with astonishment as he studied Zidane. There are stories of an ancient magical power, but I never thought that, never thought that it could actually... Zidane's gaze flickered in Garnet's direction, his brow furrowing. We can't worry about that right now. She's dying up there. He hissed impatiently, pointing with his blade. That violet cord wrapped around Garnet is connected to the monster's head. If we could somehow sever that, we'll rob it of its energy source. Zidane glanced at his friend. Blank, cover me. No doubt that beast will lunge once it realizes what we're doing. Blank nodded, tightening his grip on his sword. The ground quaked beneath him. Zidane yanked Blank's arm, and they dived into a ditch as a massive tentacle slammed on the surface above. What if it fuses back together? Steiner huffed, his back pressed to the side of the ravine. 
Sedan smirked. Can't fuse back together if it's dead. But we won't be able to distract it forever. So you better make this swing count, Rusty. Understood? He snapped. A grimace flashed over Steiner's clammy face at receiving his orders. Zidane spared Blank? no thought, bolting for the clearing with Blank at his heels. A shower of bubbling spittle rained over them as they skidded to a halt. Steiner taunted the beast with the blaze of his sword. Zidane drove his weapon into the snare. The hard outer shell cracked by the point of his dagger, igniting with a brilliant burst of rose-colored light. The monster howled, whipping around to face its assailant. His blade held steady, Blank undid the latch for a potion vial on his belt. But it was then that Steiner tore a fiery gash across one of the titan's limbs. The beast spat, rattling its pollinators and releasing a cloud of golden dust into the clearing. <coughs> oh, damn, that burns. But two can play at this game. Blank coughed, <coughs> thrusting his hand into his satchel. Limmer up, Zidane. You're gonna need to be quick. He procured an ampule, its contents like oil, the color of deadly nightshade. Hey, ugly! How about a taste of your own medicine? <laughs> Blank pitched the glass high into the air. On impact, the cavern exploded with a blinding flash of light, a thunderclap rocking the trees. Steiner hollered in the distance, barely audible over the writhing monster. His vision returning, Sudan noted a dense cloud of black particles clustering around the beast, frustrating its senses. Sudan. That won't hold it for long, yelled Blank as he made a beeline for the monster's tether. Rusty! Zidane called. Get ready to strike! The two thieves struck up the sword. It gave way, bursting open with a flash of magenta. Thick black goop sprayed from each half as it convulsed on the ground below. The monster shrieked as its gargantuan limbs fell limp, crashing to the forest floor. Steiner bounded onto its head, blood and sweat dripping from his dewy face, illuminated by the light of his sword. Master Vivi, the moment is upon us. I need all of your power. Across the clearing, Vivi held his arms outstretched as the sphere in his palms grew exponentially in size. So did the blaze on Steiner's sword. The knight thrust his weapon high into the air, crying in fury as he impaled his foe. Its head split with a resounding crack, and the beast exploded from the inside out, red hot flames engulfing it with blinding light. Steadily, the flames began to gutter out. The beast, now a charred carcass, slumped on the ground, residual saliva sizzling in the embers. The forest fell eerily silent. After a moment, something dropped to the ground across the clearing. Steiner blinked, the haze of victory fading from his face. Princess. Princess! <coughs> Zidane's head swam, and he fell to his hands and knees. He shuddered, an icy, liquid sensation raced down his spine, spilling over his palms. The wisps of fuchsia, hallowing his vision, gave way to specks of black. The thick fur lining his arms vanished, leaving his skin pale and slick with sweat. He coughed. He felt unbearably weak, his muscles rent with fatigue. Huh? Hey, hey. It was Blank's voice and his arms, which wrapped around Zidane's shoulders, heaving him to his feet. <sighs> Easy. <coughs> oh, Blank, <coughs> you came. Zidane huffed, gazing at his friend's soot-stained face. Blank glanced away. 
his expression indiscernible. Princess! Princess! Please answer me! Steiner wailed, knelt on the ground. He cradled Garnett in his arms, her pallid body, frail and limp. Oh, get a hold of yourself. Blink chided. Zidane, do you have that medicine I gave you? Huh? Dazed, Zidane huh? nodded, feeling for the vial in his pocket. He handed it to Blank, who came to kneel beside Garnett, Steiner glaring at him scornfully. Sorry, princess. This is gonna suck. The princess coughed, <coughs> falling forward, as color bloomed on her ghastly face. Princess! Um, is she gonna be okay? Vivi asked tentatively. It was then, however, that the ground underfoot began to shake rocking the trees and leveling the small mage. A puff of black smoke issued from the monster's scorched remains. A shrill, relentless whine, growing in volume, stirred from the surrounding forest. Red orbs of light blinked at them from the other story, clustering rapidly. Oh, ma'am, what now? Blank's voice came. Beneath the blackened corpse, the ground was pulsating, cracking, as if something beneath it was threatening to rupture. The party gazed at it, dumbstruck. What encircling greenery that had not been charred to a crisp began to crystallize, wilting and fossilizing into dappled stone. Petrification, Blank whispered his voice distant. Come on! We gotta get the hell out of here! Zidane called, seizing Blank by the arm, wincing at the sting in his chest. They barreled through the tunnel, Steiner cradling Garnett, unconscious in his arms. Hordes of monsters hissed and screeched as they erupted from the fissure. Creatures rained from the canopy, pouncing down on them, one after another. Fire popped and flashed as Vivi sent sparks into the air, momentarily lighting the path with bursts of yellow light. They slid down a tangle of damp underbrush, landing knee-deep on boggy terrain. Vivi gave a yelp, cut short by a splash. Zidane glanced back, his head aching in protest. Blank was already hauling the stout mage to his feet. Fanged, rooted plants gnashed at their ankles as they scrambled back onto dry land. Sedan caught a stomach-turning sound, waxing somewhere far behind them. A whooshing, chugging noise accentuated by an eerie rumble. A bitter gust of wind shook the trees. Steadily, the ground leveled beneath them, the forest brightening with the silver promise of dawn, the overstory thinning. Zidane stumbled into a tree, overcome by his spinning vision, his skin blistering with heat. Finding himself heaving for breath, he felt at his chest. Threads of fabric were corroded away, and his nostrils filled with the stench of iron. He watched as his party vanished into the pearly fog. Zidane. It was Blank's voice. Zidane! He skidded to a halt beside him. He was alone, his patchwork skin glistening with sweat, his eyes wild with alarm. What the hell are you doing? Come on! He yelled, his voice shuddering. He grabbed Zidane's arm, yanking him forward. I can't. Sidon huffed, grimacing at the strain of speaking. I'll slow everyone down. Blank. Take care of her. Please. Blank paused, noting the wound on Sidon's front, but he only tightened his grip. What are you talking about? He hissed, 
You think I ran all the way out here so you could die on me? Uh, move it! He dragged Sedan along until his feet remembered how to run. His eyes locked on the pathway as the air around them grew frigid with cold. The canopy above began to crystallize, vines coalescing, forming an ashy stone wall lined with petrified plant matter. At their backs, a stampede of beasts boiled towards them from the bowels of the forest. The rest of the party appeared from the mist, specks in the distance, marked by golden flares and crackles of fire. Beyond them, a pinprick of light signified their exit. Only, it appeared to shrink as they neared it, the forest imploding on itself. Sedan watched as Steiner and Vivi leapt through the opening, silhouettes vanishing in the pale light of dawn. Suddenly, he found himself diving for the earth, his balance lost as he tasted the weathered pathway. With a ragged growl, Blank seized Zidane roughly by both shoulders, righting him. For the briefest moment, he held him there, his eyes alight with resolve. Blank tore his leather satchel from his waist and thrust it into Zidane's chest. Go! Blank screamed. Run! Now! Sedan choked, swaying where he stood. What? Blank, but you... T Shut up! There's no choice, we are out of time. Blank brandished his sword, wheeling to face the oncoming tide of monsters. He ripped a glass vial from his apothecary holster. I'll see you out there. Go, survive, or so help me, I'll kill you myself. Sedan's breath caught in his throat, but he turned and ran, his mind a static blur. He sprinted for the exit as fast as his legs would carry him. A blast detonated behind him. Blank's yells drowned by the sound as it ricocheted off of the trees. Zidane flung himself through the tree line, scraping the edges of the tiny gap. He hit the ground, the satchel flying from his arms as he tumbled into the vast clearing beyond. He was aware of nothing but his own heart, laborious in his chest, his breath breaking from him in thin, hysteric pants. His sight was consumed by pools of black as, finally, he collapsed, swallowed by the oblivion of unconsciousness.
Do you like pretending to read too? I pretend to read engineering books all the time, but when I'm not pretending to read, I actually do a bit of writing. And I've written a book, Melodies of Life, a Final Fantasy IX retrospective and analysis. Available now. See the link in the description and buy a copy, or five, or all of them. <laughs> uh, enjoy pretending to read my book. <laughs>